Hello, I'm Dr. Deborah Campbell, and this video will be a companion piece for um, Patrick J. Hurley's A Concise Introduction to Logic. And this particular video goes with Chapter 6 on Propositional Logic, particularly Section 6.4, uh, Truth Tables Used uh, to Check the Validity of an Argument. So this is Truth Tables for Arguments Explained. Okay, so I'm going to start with an argument that was given, I think it may have been back in 1951 or 1952. Richard Nixon was on the ticket as a vice presidential candidate with, I believe, Dwight D. Eisenhower. And uh, he was accused of taking, doing some funny things with campaign contributions. So he, he went on television. I think it was one of the first televised uh, political speeches. And he gave a speech, and it's, become, it's so famous, called the Checker Speech. Now, in this speech, he started off in the very first, at the very beginning of the, the speech, if you read it, it's in the first few paragraphs, with three arguments, all of the same um, structure. The first one was, if I took the money in secret, then I did something wrong. I didn't take the money in secret, therefore I did nothing wrong. If you've been reading 6.4, you know that to, to create a truth table to check the validity of an argument, you have to first symbolize each premise, and you lay out the premises all along the same line with a slash mark between each premise and a double slash mark to offset the conclusion. So this would be the, the symbolized version of the argument. If I took the money in secret, then I did something wrong. I didn't take the money in secret, therefore I did nothing wrong. He gave two other similar arguments right in a row. Um, the second one I think was something about uh, if anybody got special favors, then I did something wrong. Nobody got special favors, so I did nothing wrong. Okay, um, he went on to argue that uh, he made a lot of appeals to, to, peop to the people, appeals to pity, that he did, you know, senators didn't make very much money. And uh, again, the only thing that he had, the only campaign contribution he had accepted that he hadn't reported was uh, his kids had wanted a dog and apparently uh, a constituent gave them, his kids, a puppy. And the puppy was named Checkers. And so the, what people remember about the speech was his, this heartfelt appeal that the only thing he had done wrong was, was keeping the puppy named Checkers, and it became the Checkers speech. That's all everybody remembered. He said his kids were in love with the puppy. He wasn't going to give it back. All right, uh, which makes me think that all the time I spent teaching logic may be a waste of time. But, but nevertheless, we're going to show that uh, he started off with three arguments, which are in fact invalid. But let me go ahead and demonstrate the method for proving that. All right, we learned about creating truth tables for propositions in 6.3. And again, that's to check um, the, the value of the compound statements um, to, when you don't know the truth value of the sentence letters. We're going to use that, a similar method to create a truth table to check the validity of an argument. All right, so we're going to use the same formula. The number of lines in the table need to be 2 to the nth power, where n is the number of different letters. This particular argument has two different letters, so the number of lines in the table is 2 to, to the second. Um, 2, remember, because true or false. And so it's um, 2 times 2. We're going to need a four-line truth table. And we're going to start the same way. Uh, the four lines, we're going to divide in half. 4 divided by 2 equals 2. So under the first distinct letter, we will have two true and two false. We go to the next different letter, and we divide uh, two in half. Two divided by two is one. So the W is going to be true, false, true, false. And wherever the letters occur in the arguments, you ca carry over that same system of assignments. So the S here will be true, true, false, false, and the W, true, false, true, false. Okay? Now. How do you go about filling in the rest of the table? Because this is not a truth table for a proposition, but for an entire argument, we have to look at the main operator for each premise and for the conclusion. We always put, draw the column around the main operator for each premise and for the conclusion. That's going to be important. So now we go ahead and fill in. Uh, we go ahead and calculate the values column by column. So this is a horseshoe. True implies true is true. True implies false is when a horseshoe is false. And then false implies true is true. False implies false, also true. Here we have a negation. We have to take care of that negated letter. So uh, 
the true becomes false and false becomes true all the way down. And the same thing for the conclusion. If true becomes false, false becomes true. Okay. So remember the negation symbol turns it into the opposite value. All right, now we have completed the truth table for this argument. So how are we going to use this to check validity? It's pretty simple. You look for a line on which all the premises could be true, and the conclusion turns out to be false. Now, going back to chapter one, hopefully you remember that the definition of deductive validity is that if an argument is logically deductively valid, then if the premises are true, the conclusion follows necessarily and has to be true based on the logical relationship. So if you say, for you may recall, if you say, if, uh, if Socrates is a man, then Socrates is mortal. Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is mortal. That's a deductively valid argument. If the premises are true, you're locked into the conclusion. It's necessitated. So let's look to see if there's any line where both premises are true, yet the conclusion can turn out to be false based on trying all the different possibilities, the logically possible combinations of truth or falsity for the two sentence letters and then for each proposition and the conclusion. So um, we really only have to look at the lines where the conclusion's false and check to see if both premises turned out true. So this line, conclusion under the main operator, the conclusion is false, but one of the premises is also false. Um, this line, conclusion is false, um, but both premises are true. This line will demonstrate that this argument is invalid, okay? That in this case, he said, if I took the money in secret, I did something wrong. I didn't take the money in secret, so I did nothing wrong. That's actually invalid reasoning because he could have done something else wrong, right? This mistake occurs so often, it has a name. It's called the fallacy of denying the antecedent. Remember, this would be the antecedent. And the second premise, he denies the antecedent and tries to say, well, then I did nothing wrong. But clearly, he could have done many other things wrong. Taking the money in secret is not the only thing that could have been done wrong. So this is the, an invalid argument form called denying the antecedent. It's a common mistake. All right. Um, let's look at what our truth table might look like for a valid argument. Here's a valid argument. This is called modus ponens. You're going to learn in chapter 7. And this is just, uh, let's just say, if Joe Biden is president, then uh, Joe Biden's first lady. So Joe Biden's president, therefore she's first lady. This is a very common argument form where we make a conditional claim. We say the antecedent is true, conclusion follows necessarily. All right, um, because it's two distinct letters, again, it would be a four-line table. Oops, that's false. And then true, false, true, false for the second letter. Hopefully this is getting to be second nature by now. Uh, the P would again be true, true, false, false. And the F would be true, false, true, false. And then we have to identify the main operator for each premise and the conclusion. Main operator for this premise would be here. Um, this premise doesn't have a logical operator. It's just the truth value of the statement. And the same with the conclusion. No logical operations, just the truth value of that statement. So. What do you look for? Is there a line in which all the premises are true while the conclusion's false? So again, you only look, have to look at the lines where the conclusion's false. Uh, the second line, conclusion's false, but, oh, I forgot to calculate this column. True implies true is true. True implies false is false. False implies true is true. False implies false is true. So once you have your calculations in place, then if the conclusion's false here, are both premises true? And the answer is no. It has a false premise there. What about down here? When the conclusion's false, this premise turns out to be false. So that is a valid argument. You have no line where when the conclusion's false, both premises or all the premises are true. If you have more than two premises, and obviously if it's three or four premises, they all have to be true on that same line under the main operator. Because you're saying that system of assignments for the letters will allow that argument to have true premises and false conclusion. And that's when it's invalid. 
This one does not have that, so it would be valid. So that's all that's different about using a truth table to check for validity. When we get to chapter seven, you're going to learn some rules of inference for checking the validity of arguments. You're gonna learn how to do uh, natural deduction and create proofs to, to check the validity of arguments. But this is one way uh, that you can check the validity of an argument. And I hope that was helpful.